couple of years ago, I ran across the most colorful GMT I'd ever seen with the Batavi Cosmopolite. It was also the first watch I'd ever seen out of Amsterdam. Now, the pinkish colorway they sent me to check out wasn't really me, but otherwise it was a pretty vivid, solid offering. Well, the brand is now back with another GMT. That's also another one with a splash of color. Although it's not your standard GMT, in an interesting twist, they replaced the standard fourth hand with a rotating disc in the middle. And depending on the colorway you pick, it'll either come as a standard GMT or a world timer like this one. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and today we're going to check out the Batavi Geograph. Now, before we really jet off with this one, there are a couple things to note. The first of which is that this is a Kickstarter watch, and they'll be launching about July 12th. And second, this is a prototype that was lent into the channel, and as such, all your standard prototype warnings apply. The watch head on this one actually looks pretty good, but the bracelet looks like it's been around the block a few times. So just bear that in mind, because it actually has. That said, let's get started with the specs. The Geograph's 316L case has a width of 39 millimeters, keeping it just on the smaller side of things, while the lug to lug is 48, which should enable this to be a great fit for a variety of wrist sizes. It gives the watch these sleek and slender lugs. Total thickness is 13 millimeters, and that does include both the exhibition case back, as well as a slightly double domed sapphire with AR. Personally, I'd prefer it to be a little bit thinner, but this is a watch with an internal bezel, and they all tend to be a little bit chunky. It also has a fairly solid feel at 155 grams on its bracelet, as well as dual sign crowns, although only the one for the movement is actually screwed in. And topping everything off, you have 200 meters of water resistance and a Swiss Soprod C125 movement. Since this one is a little bit different, let's quickly talk about how it works. And for the most part, it operates like every other standard GMT out there these days, except instead of a hand, a circular ring is used. By pulling the crown out to the first position, you can independently adjust that ring. So if you're keeping score at home, this is more of a collar's GMT than, say, a traveler's. To use it, just rotate that ring until whatever second time zone you want to track is right under the 12. Then to read it later on, just reference whatever's sitting under the 12. For this world timer version, you can then rotate the internal bezel. Rotate it so that whatever city the ring is set to is just above the 12. After that, if you want to know what time it is in any other city on this bezel, just look for that city name and then look at what the ring is underneath that name. And that should tell you the time, or at least that's how it's supposed to work. Before we get to the good, let's first talk about what I don't like here, the bad so to speak. And first off, this world timer, as it is here right now, doesn't actually work. For example, here it is set to 8 a.m. in New York, which means it should be 5 a.m. in LA. But reading LA on the watch, it actually says it's three hours ahead, not three hours back. Now, this is an issue they know about and an issue they're planning on fixing with production. They're just going to reverse the order the cities are printed in on the bezel. So this shouldn't really be an issue, but I wanted to point it out. I've also found the watch to have a lot of reflection and glare, to the point that it is a distraction. Which I assume has to be coming from the crystal, as the dial itself isn't reflective. Now, I do really like how the slight curvature of the crystal comes out of the bezel. Where it's not overly tall, but just tall enough to give the watch some character. But whatever's going on with this crystal is also quite reflective, and I think you're going to see that a lot here. So perhaps some more AR coating on the crystal would have helped. For the most part, I think this is a very solid watch and would make an ideal travel companion. The only area that it's really lacking in is loom, as it's just so-so. The loom on the dial isn't bad, but the hands fade out a bit before that, as well as a bit before my Seiko Turtle. So if they can figure out a way to improve the loom on the hands, just to the point that it's the same level as the indices, I think it'd be okay here. And it's also pretty cool that they loom the sun and moon on the GMT ring. And I'd also like those to have a little bit more loom, because as it is here, they're gone before you notice them. One thing that might help would be to make the hands a little bit longer or a little bit wider, just to increase their surface area, because as they are right now, they are a bit thin and short. Just a little bit, they're not too bad, but as they are right now, they can occasionally get lost with the blue backdrop and the reflections of the crystal. So just a little bit bigger would be ideal. That out of the way, let's move on to what I do like here. And first up, the case size. There aren't many sub-40 GMTs out there, so if you are looking for something a little bit smaller, yet still with a lot of presence, 
thanks to the use of color here, this is great for that. On my seven and a quarter inch wrist, it's also extremely comfortable. It sits squarely where it needs to, and you can easily and comfortably wear this all day. So from a wearability standpoint, the size is perfect. Although a lot of that great wearability also has to do with the bracelet. It's an H-Link design, which I always find to be extremely comfortable, as it's really flexible and it just seems to conform to the natural curvature of your wrist. It's also really well made. You have solid links secured with screws, a milled clasp, and solid end links with quick release. And I have to say that the quick release here is a nice addition. Some quick release bracelets I've run across can be a pain to put on or take off, but this one's quite easy. It's also got an eye-catching design, where it's mostly brushed, but it does have these polished center links that guide your eyes up and down. Although, as good as it looks on this prototype, I have noticed quite a few wear marks on that polished section. And as polished as it is, I can see this getting marked up quite easily while desk diving. I don't think they're planning to have an extra scratch-resistant coating, but it would be a nice addition here. The case is also nicely done for the price with no sharp or pointy angles, and a nice mixture of brushed and polished surfaces. It's a smaller case, but thanks to the longer and slender lugs, it looks a little bit bigger with a sleek profile. On the rear, you can also see the exhibition case back, and get a glimpse of the Soprod movement. And as far as movements go, this is a good looking one. It's all very nicely done, with perhaps the one exception being the bezel crown. Both crowns are a bit small and a little harder to get a hold of. But the bezel crown is even more so, as it's just tucked up in between the lugs and the curvature of the case. And that, combined with a really stiff mechanism, makes it quite difficult to turn it when you're holding it. And that's just when you're holding it. If you're wearing it on your left hand, it's just about impossible to reach over and turn while wearing. Matavi also did a great job with the dial. It's creative, well-balanced, and nicely symmetrical. Out of the four, this may be the most normal colorway. But even then, the green and gray ring give this a nice touch of color to pique your interest, which draws you in where you can then appreciate the finer details of the design. One criticism I'd give it is that it is quite crowded. Oftentimes, though, that can't really be helped when you're talking about a world timer, because there's no way of being a world timer without having a ton of names surrounding the dial. The GMT version does look a little bit cleaner, but even beyond the bezel, there's a lot going on here. And I think some are going to look at it and think that it's just way too busy, especially in the center, where you have both the brand and model name taking up a good chunk of real estate. The GMT ring is also a very creative idea, and perhaps gives the design a cleaner look than a standard fourth hand. But one potential negative to that is that because of the design, this is not one you can easily read at a glance. The font on that little ring is just far too small for that, and especially if you have older eyes. As for what's just okay, I got two things to talk about, and the first is the movement. The Geograph comes with a Soprod C125, which looks good and should be equivalent to an ETA 2893. But the only real reason I've listed this as being just okay is because I'm not overly familiar with it, and as such, I'm not sure what I can tell you about the long-term performance. And when I tried doing some research, there wasn't a ton I could find on it. From what I did find is that it is an ETA 2893 replacement. So same shape, same size, and spec-wise it is equivalent. Although I don't think it's an ETA clone like, say, the Salidas. I didn't find any clear-cut information, but the one thing I did run across said that it was based on another Soprod movement, and in turn that Soprod movement was based on a Seiko 4L series. So I still have a lot of questions about this one, and if you happen to know more about it, please leave a comment down below and I'll pin it so others can find it as well. Oh, and one side note, this is one that is set up with a ghost date. And lastly, let's talk about price. Early bird pricing for the Kickstarter will be starting at 629 euros, or about $656, which I think is reasonable. I've talked about this before with GMTs, but they do typically start right around this price point. And for some, that is a common complaint because they are always a bit pricey. It's pretty rare to find one below $500, and most of that is just because of the movement let alone everything else. At least historically speaking. In the past, I have run across a few exceptions, but those are exceptions, not the rule. Although, that may be changing, and I think next year is going to be the year of the affordable GMT. If you haven't heard about this already, any day now Seiko is going to be releasing a whole new set of Seiko 5 GMTs, and they're going to be using a newer, lower-cost Seiko GMT movement, which will undoubtedly be making its way to microbrands. 
In fact, I already have a review lined up for later this year for a new watch that's using one of those newer movements, and they're planning to undercut the Seiko by about 100 bucks. So this is just the beginning, and we'll have to see what happens next year. But any GMT that's launching right now needs to be prepared for some stiff, low-cost competition. In order to be truly competitive, they're going to have to have something unusual or special in their model. Just so they stand out. And luckily for Batavi, that's exactly what they have here. This is a more refined, higher-end watch with a more unusual display than what's going to be coming, as well as using a higher quality, high-beat movement than those Seikos. It's also a gorgeous watch with a nice pop of color. And with a few improvements, I think could be a perfect tropical getaway piece. And one of the nice things about Kickstarters is they actually have time to make those changes before production. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. As usual, let me know what you think about this one down below, the Batavi Geograph. Also, let me know what you think about those new Seikos coming. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time. See you next time.